I thought it would take a little bit of time to create a, a hammer tool. And of course, the reason why uh, I decided on uh, creating something like this is because it will let me show off uh, a few tools that I wanted to go over. At the same time, it will let, allow me to show uh, yet a different method of modeling, which is really nothing new. I mean, you know, it's just generally the way I model uh, anyways, but, uh, you know, it's a slightly different approach than what I've been using uh, up until now. <clears throat> so here I have uh, the hammer, so hammer reference that we will be using. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just create a new item. So I'm just going to click here or again, model five over here. Okay, so what we first of all need is we need to analyze this shape. Well, one thing that you'll notice is that most of this is really comprised of a bunch of cylinders. This is a cylindrical shape, that's a cylindrical shape, so is this, and so is this. Now, obviously this changes a little bit in shape, um, but for the most part, it's just mainly using cylinders. So let's go ahead and just create a cylinder. So let's go into geometry, draw primitive cylinder, and let's draw out something like that. Now it's not perfect and it's not centered, so we will have to center it. So under the tool properties, you just go over to here and you zero out the position. And of course, when this is all zero, you should notice that it's perfectly on origin. Okay, perfect. Next up, uh, you're going to want a few steps here uh, in terms of you know how many subdivisions you have here. And I think this is actually pretty good. Um, if I look at this object here, you have one, two, three, four, and this actually has the same amount of steps uh, per uh, quadrant. So, okay, so we have our basic cylinder. Let's go ahead and just go into whatever view. And in this case, I'm just using this as a reference, but again, you know, if I did, didn't want to, I, I don't really have to use this reference at all. I'm just going to want to kind of, uh, you know, nail it down. <laughs> Nailed down. Um, anyways, um, so as far as this first cylinder goes, uh, I think that's fine. Next up, I'm just going to go ahead and just go into polygon mode. I'm going to select one of these polygons. And I'm going to go ahead and just go into bevel tool. So, of course, polygon bevel. And I'm just going to go ahead and just extrude once more. And I am now thinking that maybe I could have done this slightly differently, but, you know, for now... It's all good. You know what? Let's go ahead and just select all of this. Let's go into Scale tool. Uh, of course, that's hotkey R. Let's just go ahead and just shrink the radius down just a tad. And now let's go ahead and just select all these by middle clicking in polygon mode. And then going ahead and just beveling outwards. Now, you might notice that, of course, right now my group polygons is off, so let's turn that on until we have something like this. Now, one thing you'll notice on this hammer is that it's got a more elliptical shape uh, along the handle, so let's go ahead and just go into the scale tool, and let's scale along the X. So let's take that up like that. Not too far, though. I might actually want to leave it. I might just want to scale down on Z just to bring down this a little closer. Okay, so we have something like that, and uh, that's pretty good so far. Now we're going to need uh, this shape here, and this shape, um, I don't know if I want to model it just yet, because right now I'm just going to go ahead and just go with basic cylinder, uh, cylindrical shape, so for now I'm just going to concentrate on the head over here. So you know what, for now I'm just going to go ahead and just select one of these polygons. And I'm just going to go ahead and just go to Duplicate, Clone, and just go over it like that. I'm going to go into, go in, into uh, Rotate. I'm going to want to rotate it by 90 degrees. So in this case I did, rotated it along here. And of course I want to make sure that it's perfectly 90, so negative 90 will do just fine. And then I can go to move, just move it in like so. And I can get back to my beveling tool. But right now what I want to do is I want to, like if you notice the 
overall thickness of the head. It's a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and just scale it up just a little bit and go back into bevel. So let's bevel it once. And then now one thing you might notice is that if I middle click right now, while, while my tool is active, and of course the way I know that my tool is active is if my handles are being displayed and if there's any properties in the tool menu. If I press Q right now to drop my tool, you'll notice that, well, there's nothing here and there's also no handle. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. And again, bevel, use my tool. And if I now click, middle click, you'll notice that it's going to repeat. And this is actually really useful because now what I could do is I could just easily do something like this, middle click, that, extend, middle click, back, middle click again, a little bit more back, scale down, middle click, and so on. So of course, the way I could have done this, um, if I wanted to have more detail across here, where the iron and the rubber handle meets, um, you know, I could have basically done the same thing. I could have kept extruding and repeating and repeating and repeating, but I want to take a slightly different approach for that. So anyways, we have the head, we have the handle, and um, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and just add a little bit more detail to this handle overall. Just for now. Okay, so we have that. Now next up, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to change the curvature. Now I can't change the curvature if there's no detail across here. If I go ahead and just use uh, perhaps something like, uh, you know, if I press T on the keyboard to give me the element uh, transform tool, one thing you'll notice is that, you know, I'm able to modify an object with a radius and you'll notice that it is deforming. But the problem is, of course, is that there's not enough geometry in here for me to be able to deform it and add any curvature. If I look at my old hammer, my hammer reference, you'll notice that there is, in fact, more details. And now I am able to make a line go from here to here to here and so on. And I'm able to pull the details out. So I'm able to adjust. Of course, if I'm missing that detail here, then there's nothing I can move and select. So basically what I have to do is I have to add some more divisions across here. So let's just go ahead and just select that. I can either use the up button or I can just select Alt L, you know, all the same. And of course I can go into my loop slice. So that is under mesh edit loop slice. And right now I only have one cut. Let's add something like 10. I think 10 cuts should probably be enough for what I need. And now that I have more detail in here, what I can do now is, of course, I can go ahead and just edit the overall shape for this object. So you know what, let's go into a, one of these side views. So in this case, I'm going to go into the back view. And let's edit this shape. Well, the way I'm going to edit this shape is I'm going to go ahead and just go into, um, I guess in this case, cylinder, or cylindrical fall off. And of course, once I use, use the cylindrical uh, tool, what I can do is I can just go ahead and just right click and drag it around. And of course, I can use the center to move it around entirely. I can use these little X's here, these little crosses to go ahead and just move it. And what I can then do is I can use the move tool. So I can press W to give me a handle. And then I can just go ahead and just drag out a small portion of this hammer. And of course, once I'm done, all I have to do is like, I just have to drop and my fall off will be still in the same spot. Now I can go ahead and just move it wherever I want. I can use the move tool again. And just do something like that. Move it again, but this time with a much larger or with a slightly larger handle or radius. Then I can just go ahead and just curve that in like that. And the only other thing I need is I just need to make sure that I just scale this up. And one thing you'll notice is that right now I made a selection and I try to scale it up. And you know, my bad, but of course what happens is that 
the center of the falloff is always the strongest. It's always going to affect the object the most. And in this case, if you notice, is that when I use the cylindrical falloff and I moved the geometry backwards, the part that was in the center got moved the most. So as you can see, the, the closer we get to the outside edge of this, this falloff, the less it gets affected. So if I go ahead and just try that out again, you'll notice that the center portion gets affected the most and the part that's outside of this falloff doesn't get affected at all. So what that means is that if in order for me to affect this portion of the model here, I need to either move the falloff down here or I have to go ahead and just disable my falloff. So I'm just going to go to falloff, none, and now I can go ahead and just scale this portion of the model like that. And of course, it's okay if I do this manually. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And of course, now I'm going to split across here. But now, Modo has retained my last uh, subdivision count. In this case, in this case, it's uh, ten. So right now, I just want one. One is perfectly fine. And I'm just going to keep splitting until I have a nice, clean, uh, rounding effect going on here. And of course, I could take the most bottom one, and I could just round it out a little bit. I could take that one, just move it, and scale it. And of course, right now, I've been only working on this axis. If I go here, you'll notice that it's perfectly uh, straight. Now, for the most part, I want this handle to be straight on this axis. But the part that rounds out, rounds down, I want it to be, you know, I want some curvature in there, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and just select these. And I want to scale them down on Z. A little bit more. And now I have a nice curvature along all these axes. Now I'm not really happy about this little hump over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just remove that. So I'm just going to go back into my cylindrical tool here. I'm just going to go and use move again. And I'm just going to tuck it in just a slightly, a little bit. And you know what? This will do just fine. So go back into fall off, turn it off, and that part's done. So next up, I'm just going to go ahead and just select this edge loop. So double click, use the bevel tool. So in this case, mesh edit bevel. And like that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just select one of these edges, press Alt L to select all the parallel edges, go into loop slice, like that. And then of course, we're going to have to do the same thing here, except this we're going to have to do slightly differently. So what I'm going to do first of all, is I'm just going to select these edges here, Alt L. And you know what, let me just make the radius more or less even across this entire, uh, you know, radius of this cylinder here, our cylindrical shape. And of course, I'm just going to keep doing that until I add just enough geometry. And then I'm going to go ahead and just move this down like so. Just keep adding geometry. Now, why did I just add this here? Well, if I go ahead and just use tab, you'll notice that right now, this has a sort of sharp, sharper angle. If I go ahead and just delete this edge loop, as you can see this one here, and then I press X, or well, backspace, you'll notice that right now it's going to have a kind of a round and then sharp kind of fall off. You know what, this could work, but in my case I just want it to go down and then up and then flat. So that is why I added this extra edge. If I go ahead and just add another edge loop here, like this, and I press once again, press tab to go into my smooth view. You will now notice that the shape is getting a little tighter. This goes straight and then down and then up. And of course, same thing here. If I go ahead and just do something like this, or I add a little bit more detail here, you'll notice that the sharpness of this angle here has gotten a little bit sharper.
Okay. So the handle, uh, she's uh, pretty much done. Um, the last thing that we really have to work on is this portion here.